Thank you so much, BJ, for joining Hackride Studios. The first time I saw you interview Bam, I realized how devastatingly shallow and soulless you were. I knew I had to have you, so welcome to the team. Well, thank you, Mr. Hackride. I must say it was a little weird to get a call out of the blue from a demon, but as I always say, when opportunity knocks, you answer that door high on GHB with your Jersey girl ass in the air. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, yes. You are truly awful. A pit of bile and salted mucus. Ah, oh, thank you. You are welcome, BJ. You have come in a kind of transitionary time for the company. You see, 98% of our entire business model is for one show, The Blind Mike Project. That we are only covering around 45% of show-related material in the production. In our contract, it does not count if we initiate the interest. Blind Mike has to mention them first. Are you understanding any of this, BJ? So this Blind Mike guy has to start the beef, and then you come in and amplify or direct people to the already existing beef. Exactly. Such a quick little cut. Well, can I ask, why don't we just do only show related material and get that number to 100%? Great question, BJ. Since you signed the NDA, now is a good enough time to tell you. Jerry Seinfeld is a raving madman, an uncontrollable diva and psychopath, and he is also missing. A while ago, we had to extract him from a murder-for-hire scheme involving a middling Ohio comedian. We've also had to pay restitution to two comedians he forced to say f*** on the air launch. He is a walking time bomb. But no one has heard from him since last week, and we are kind of in a rough spot here. With him missing, and this week's show being very not show related, I have one Hail Mary to save us and this studio. I called in a favor from hell, and I was able to steal the feed for a show filmed down there, which I think might be a big enough loophole for us to save this thing. Do you understand, BJ? We are loopholing this bitch. Yes, Mr. Hackride. I think I get it, but I guess I just don't understand what my role in all this will be. What do you need from me? Well, BJ, the funny thing is you have already fulfilled half your duties for us here at Hackride Studios. See, this whole intro with you in it has now been deemed show-related, thus raising our numbers before the nightmare of a shit show coming up. But I do need you to do one more thing for me. In about five minutes, Plug that plug-in over there, for the feed from hell to come up on the network. I have to get on a plane right now. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I can do that for you, Mr. Hackride. A plane. Holy shit. Where are you flying to? Hell? Oh no, BJ. A place much worse. A metaphorical ice raft launched for the soulless, to drift among the fog and shadow for eternity. A wet hole filled with decaying pig carcass. I'm going to Rochester, New York. Oh my god! A few moments later. Well, I guess it's time to plug this in. I've actually never seen a TV show from hell before. Welcome back to the Jerry's. Well, that last guest got a little feisty. Mother Teresa is a real donkey fucking cunt. And you can print that. You two didn't even say a fucking word. I swear to Satan, sometimes it is like talking to two brick walls. As you know, we always finish the show with a game on the Jerry's. Before we are forced to return to the pit of nightmarish tortures, I wouldn't wish on that Joan Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jerry. Jerry, you have a special caller. Oh, yes, Joe. Joe, what is up? A Mr. Beelzebub. Beelzebub. It's Jerry Lewis. How are you? Uh, uh, uh yeah, is this Jerry? Uh, yeah, this is Beelzebub. <laughs> Baba Booey's penis. Baba Booey's penis. <laughs> well, that is not the real Beelzebub, obviously. The real Beelzebub would have called me in back on my personal number. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Box Eating Dad gifts five baby foreskins. Thank you, Box Eating Dad. 
Do you two f retards have anything to add? I do this show with two hosts who are more like ghosts. Just say something, say anything. Don't you realize we are going back into the demon holes as soon as this is over? We can at least have one moment where you say something of significance. I won't hold my breath. Literally, we don't breathe anymore. That is just a fact. <laughs> Would you look at that in the chat? Hack ride. The demon has asked for a link. He's the one who got kicked out of hell for not raping. Yes, send him a link, please. I like hack ride. He's very talented. I think that demon may have gotten a bad rap. Anytime I was ever with Hack Ride, he was always raping. Just a motherfucking raping machine. Scoreboard sparking and exploding kind of raping. Fake news on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Jerry. Okay, yes, Joe. Jerry, our guest is here. It looks like Hack Ride has sent us a real living human to play our award-winning game. As you know, all of us in hell practice genitalism, which is a religion we created to honor our only vice and pleasure allowed in the genitals of living, walking humans above us. We don't know if God's lawyers f***ed up or they just thought since we are below, we are going to do it anyway. We worship the undercarriage of the living. And our game here at the Jerry's only honors them and in no way ridicules their ugly natures and cheesy or fishy smells. Okay, let's bring on our living guests. We have little to zero information on this gentleman other than his name is Carl, and he lives in Rochester, New York. I thought that we had it bad. But Carl, I am so sorry. It's not Syracuse. Carl, it's a pleasure for you, I'm sure, to meet me. Jerry Lewis, I understand that, but how are you? I, I mean, I guess I'm doing all right. I'm a little confused of what's even going on. Why am I here? I'm sorry, Keep Carl. talking or Jenny gets it, Carl. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chris, why the fuck are you not helping me right now? Well, just hold on, Carl. Let's see how this plays out. Anyway, thank you for joining us for our game. We like to call Celestial Peepers, where Jerry, Jerry, and I take a look at someone, you know,'s penis or vagina with our one and only true right, granted to us by God's bad attorneys, and you have to guess what it actually looks like. Does this game make sense to you, Carl? No. How? What part of that made any sense to anyone? We will give you a few options. You pick what you think, and we tell you if you are right or wrong about what your friend, family, or loved one's genitals look like. You know, I do actually do a, a game show with a talking potato, so I guess this isn't so bad. So, Carl, I ask, do you have someone you would like to pick for the game? Um, well, I guess I'd pick Vinnie Paulina, because I don't think he even knows what his genitals look like. <laughs> So that could be fun. That's gross. Carl has picked one Vinnie Paulino. Can we get a location on Vinnie Paulino? Paulino, thank you, Joe. What a gorgeous day to go for a walk and work on this belly. Ouch! Why is my man junk burning? Ouch. 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 Okay, looks like we have found Vinnie Paulino. Let's go ahead and lock him in for the game. Wow, wow, wow. Now, Jerry, Jerry, and I, Jerry Lewis, will take a long, hard look at Vinnie Paulino's penis and in it okay. find what makes it so unique and worthy of hell's one and only religion. What, what, what? Um, uh, um, uh, um. Uh. Well, Jerry Lewis is done. I seen all I need to. I'm going to ask you to look at three pictures and pick the one that you think is most like the penis that belongs to your friend, Vinnie Paulino. Up, we have a pedophile in the park. It's not me. I can't move. Is it picture one tiny little egg in a giant nest? Is it picture two, a totally shaved tapeworm, long but not thick? Or three, wide as a penis can get? but almost bulldog looking, being cut short by some catastrophe, leaving only a trunk of a once mighty tree. Uh, hi, this is uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, that's it. And uh, welcome to my game. So, Blind Mike and Craig, I asked you, which picture best describes what Vinny Paulino has between his legs? And I would remind you that this is a game and does satisfy the contract for Jerry, uh, for me, Okay, please take your time. 
one, two, or three, and why you think that way. I, I got to go with three. Why just sounds right with Vinny. Well, now that you have picked, let us reveal to you the real answer. Well, we have a little bit of a surprise here for you. And this is a first for the show. We knew it would happen one day, but never imagined it would be with this particular beefy man, Vinny. To the question, what does Vinny Paulino's penis look like? The answer, Carl, is none of the above. Should have guessed that. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. What Vinny has in his crotch area isn't even described in any of the generations of ancient text. Just a void of nothingness. No shape, no mass. There is no breeding function, only a swirl and blur of glitching air where the genitals should be. Should have guessed that. A void deeper than the deepest pit in hell. Uh. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Carl, you are incorrect. You know, I should have known. I've never seen his wife smiling ever. She is not a happy person. That makes perfect sense. I can't imagine what you would do with this information in the world of the living. But now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Thank you. That inconsiderate jerk. I guess. Oh, looks like we lost Carl. Well, isn't that f***ing convenient? Well, our time here is almost up. And yep, it looks like the blades have all been sharpened and the spiders have all been rustled. So back to the torture room for us. But thank you for... Well, Susan, what happened Daddy, here? what happened? What is this? Don't worry, folks. Nothing to see here. Just a real creepo pedophile type. But we got him. Whoa, that was weird. Honestly, it should be our logo. <laughs> uh, well, BJ, I would like to thank you for pulling the cord when I text you. Once the contractual obligations were filled, we didn't need to subject the viewers to that any longer. From what I have seen, I can't wait to get to work here. One more viper in the pit, am I right? Well, here's the thing, BJ. We needed you in the beginning for the show-related material. And then you did that plug thing for me, which again, very nice, thank you very much. And now here we are at the end. And guess what? You are using me again for a show-related ending. You catch on fast, BJ, but you're only about halfway there. See, the thing is, we don't much care for enabling cuts around here at the Hackride Studios, a creature whose sole existence relies on the pain and soul draining of others. That's, That's my, my job, job, BJ. <laughs> so, we have transferred you to live action. Animation is for the innocent of heart, BJ, not the corrupted. Now let me introduce you to your new boss in live action, Alec. Oh, Alec. Hello, BJ. My name is Alec Baldwin. Hey, let me ask you, have you ever wanted to be a cinematographer? Is that a gun? Oh, don't worry. It isn't loaded. And action. Oh my god. Bam! 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 Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> What a fun time we have here at Hackride Studios and the Blind Mike Project. I would like to thank our great guest stars, Carl Hamburger, Jenny Jingles, and Chris the Producer from Who Are These Podcasts? Real salt of the earth people, and goddamn, do they know how to throw an orgy. I will never look at Rochester the same again. I would also like to thank Producer Joe from the Shuli Network. Yes. That was the real producer, Joe. These cameos are getting out of hand. I'm looking at you, Tookie. 